Hi, Ben here from Trident and Fly Fishing, and I just got back from an amazing trip to Alaska. And I'm here to talk about how you can book the perfect Alaskan fly fishing trip. Alaska is an epic fly fishing destination. In fact, it's probably on just about everyone's bucket list. There are hundreds of lodges and lots and lots of variables. So what we're gonna do here is break it down into five simple ways that you can make this trip the absolute perfect Alaskan fly fishing adventure. I wanted to let you know about Trident Travel. Trident Travel is a new service that we've launched for 2021 that's designed to help you book the perfect fly fishing trip every single time. And the best part is it never will cost you more than going direct through the lodge. We've got lots of destinations available and we're booking trips right now. So if you're interested in learning more or if you're traveling for the next year or even two years, let us know. We're here to help you book those trips. Now on to Alaska. Up first to book your perfect Alaskan fly fishing trip is species. And specifically, what do you want to fish for? Alaska's got lots of fish and it's really important to dial in what you're gonna be looking for to book that perfect trip. First up is rainbow trout, and they're gonna be the primary target for most of the lodges in Alaska. And rainbow trout in Alaska are awesome. You've got huge, wild, native fish, and they are voracious. And if you haven't fished for them, these are probably what is gonna put Alaska on that bucket list. The other thing about rainbow trout is they're gonna be available all season long. So pretty much any lodge that you book in Alaska at any time, with a few exceptions, you're gonna be able to fish for these wild Alaskan rainbows. The only other thing that you should think about is whether or not you're really looking for that trophy fish. And when we say a trophy fish, we're talking about something in that 30 inch plus class. If you're looking for a trophy fish, there are a couple of rivers like the Naknek and the Quijack and a few others that are just bigger fish fisheries. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in the home water section of this video. But again, if you're looking for that huge, really true trophy rainbow, you're gonna to wanna to pay a little bit more attention to which lodge you select. Up next is king salmon. King salmon are the biggest species of salmon in North America, and they are a phenomenal fly target. But there's a couple of things that you should know. First up, the king salmon run, is early. It takes place in June into early July, which is way, way earlier than the sockeye runs and the silver runs and all of the other species of salmon. So you're gonna really have to plan your trip specifically to target these kings if that's what you're after. The second thing that you should know is that while most fly anglers are really looking to get one on the swing, that is not gonna be possible on a lot of rivers. While king salmon are there, there are a lot of deep rivers that are just too deep, too big, and don't have the right density of king salmon to target them on a swung fly. Going back to those numbers, king salmon numbers are on the decline, and you're definitely gonna to wanna to pick a river that has a really good run, especially if you wanna swing. All this is to say that if you're really looking to target king salmon, and especially on the swing, you're probably gonna to wanna to plan a trip that is specifically designed to target those kings. And we work with a lot of lodges in the Aleutian Islands that have fantastic swinging water for kings, and they're the perfect destination. Up next are silver salmon, otherwise known as coho, and they are a great fly rod target. They enter the rivers in August and September, they're great at taking flies. If you are not a catch and release fisherman, they also provide great table fare. And overall, these 10 pound fish are just a fantastic target species. And most of the lodges in Alaska, especially those who fly out, will have a silver salmon fishery or at least some place that you can access those silvers. Up next are the three other Alaskan salmon species. Obviously, Alaska is super well known for their salmon and probably the number three salmon on the fly rotters list is gonna be the sockeye. And the truth of it is, sockeye are iconic Alaska. 
they turn red and they migrate in huge, huge numbers. And they are super, super cool to see. But in terms of fishing for them, they don't really take a fly. So you're gonna be flossing them if you're interested. And they're really better for eating and taking home than they are as a game fish. You've also got the pink salmon and the chum salmon, which is gonna be a little bit bigger than that pink salmon. They are perfect game fish. Not great table fare, but really fun to catch. All of these salmon species are gonna be available starting at about mid-July and into August. And being Pacific salmon, all of these salmon die after they've spawned. So if you book your trip too late and you're really intent on catching all of these species, you're gonna end up with a bunch of fish that are on the decline, shall we say. Last but not least are what I'll call the other species in Alaska. That's grayling, char, dolly varden, lake trout, northern pike, and a few others. By and large, you don't necessarily have to book a trip around these. Sure, there are lodges that focus on true trophy pike or true trophy char, but generally speaking, these species are gonna be available wherever you go. Now onto our second item, which is season. Now we've talked a little bit about the seasons in our species overview, but seasons in Alaska are a little bit more complicated. And the tackle and tactics that you use are gonna vary throughout that very short fly fishing season. Up first is the spring season, which starts whenever the Alaskan fishing season opens in early June and goes through about early July. And of course, with all these seasons, it's gonna vary based on weather and which specific river system you're on. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to talk to your lodge or your guide to get the exact specifics on the river systems that you're gonna be fishing before you make a determination. Now back to the spring season, or as I like to call it, the pre-sockeye season. The fishing in Alaska revolves around sockeye. That's what the bears eat, that's what the trout eat. They are the primary driver of the entire ecosystem. So before the sockeye are there, things are gonna be a little bit different. Primarily, you're gonna be fishing for rainbow trout. Again, there are kings available in certain systems. You're gonna be able to target these rainbows using traditional Western tactics. Dries, nymphs, streamers, even mice. And that makes the fishing really, really interesting. And what's more interesting is that these are post-spawn fish, so they're super hungry. They're really gonna be interested in eating whatever comes their way. The downside of spring is, and particularly the earlier you get, is that weather becomes a huge factor. Not only can it be very cold and wet when you're on the river, but as we found out on our most recent trip, you can really get a few weeks shift before the fishing becomes good at all. If water temperatures don't get to a certain point, the trout are gonna be fairly sedate and certainly things like mouse fishing are gonna be out. And because of that, the spring season is gonna be where you're gonna see slightly lower prices because of that variability and the variability in the weather. Up next comes July, or as I like to call it, sockeye season. So this is when fresh sockeye move into the rivers in really, really big numbers, and you can practically walk across them. We talked about sockeye earlier. They do not really eat flies, so you're gonna be flossing them if you wanna fish for them. But this is also the time of year when rainbow trout tend to move out of the rivers. So if you're a rainbow trout fisherman, there are still gonna be trout, but the rivers are clogged with salmon and they have not dropped their eggs, so there's really, not a lot for the rainbow trout to eat, and it is very difficult. With that said, if you're willing to be patient, there are trout to be found. Of course, this is also a great time to view bears because the bears will start showing up in big numbers on the rivers. Next comes August, and that is gonna be bead season. And this is when the sockeye have dropped their eggs, and everything goes crazy. This is really the season that Alaska is known for. You've got super hungry rainbow trout that are gonna add their entire body weight for the long Alaskan winter, and they are eating every egg in sight. They will move long distances for a not so good drift, and this is what Alaska is really known for. Of course, we've got all of our salmon species moving into the rivers, and it's just a fantastic time of year. With that said, if you wanna throw a dry or a streamer, 
you're probably not gonna wanna go during August. Last but not least is the fall. And that starts sometime in early to mid September and goes through the end of the season. And the fall is a fantastic time of year to fish Alaska. The trout are really as big and as fat as they're gonna get. There's still some salmon around. And because the trout are just really doing everything they can to fatten up, you're gonna have opportunities on beads. And you're also gonna see that they'll start to eat streamers and nymphs and even the occasional dry again. Of course, the streamer fishing is gonna get better as the season progresses and there are fewer and fewer eggs in the river. But needless to say, this is a fantastic time to visit Alaska. Next up is flyouts. So first, what is a flyout? If you've never been to Alaska, that's a great question. A flyout is simply when your lodge takes you on a small float plane or in some cases a helicopter to fly to a different river than your home water. And this is an awesome experience. You get to see incredible scenery, you get to fish a diversity of fisheries, and you get to fish waters when they're at their absolute best. The downside of flyouts, of course, is if you're really trying to target a single species, like let's say that 30 inch rainbow, you probably wanna find a river that is chock full of those and stay on it. If you fly out, you're gonna be getting that variety, but not you know, those increased chances at that trophy fish. The other downside of flyouts is scheduling. Generally speaking, lodges do not have availability to fly everyone to a single river. So if you find that you really liked a certain system, you might only fish it once or twice in a week. And again, we'll talk about the home water next, but definitely something to think about. And the third con of flyouts is that you are gonna be flying in a small plane. We flew around in beavers, which are 70 years old, and while they're super, super safe and reliable, it's not for everyone. Number four is our home water. And the home water, I think, is a largely overlooked factor in Alaskan fishing. Regardless of whether or not you're gonna fly out, you will probably be fishing the home water at least a little bit. And in some cases, you're gonna be fishing there three or four times during a week. And so I can't stress enough how important it is to make sure that that home water matches your specific desires for your trip. And that's gonna be species as well as tactics. So we talked about it earlier. If you're looking for a trophy rainbow, they're probably not gonna be on every river system. Same thing with Char and Dolly Varden, not necessarily gonna be everywhere. So whichever lodge you choose, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that home water is the right home water for your trip. And last but not least, number five is the lodge. If you've already decided on the species, the season, the home water, and the flyouts, you're probably gonna whittle this down to little to no options, but there are some rivers that do have multiple lodges, and it's gonna be really important to make sure that the lodge meets your expectations. Some lodges are very luxurious with gourmet food. Other lodges are more of a bare bones experience. And if that's really important to you, if it's important to have internet and creature comforts, you're definitely gonna wanna make sure that that lodge fits with those expectations. On the other hand, if you're a diet in the wool fisherman and you're not super interested in creature comforts, you might be able to save a little bit of money. A couple of other factors to consider while you're looking at lodging is single versus double occupancy. How much is that upcharge? Some lodges do have single rooms, although it's rare in Alaska. And last but not least is the size of the lodge. We visited lodges that have 30 rooms versus lodges that have three rooms. So if you're going with a small group, you might wanna have a lodge that you are the only guests at the lodge. Whereas if you're going on your own, maybe it's less important to you. But big lodges definitely have a different feel and a different program than do the smaller counterparts. And while I said there are only gonna be five factors, this one might be factor 5.5, which is to book early. We're filming this in 2021 and COVID has upset the lodge industry in Alaska tremendously. So bookings are booked one, even two years out. And lodges typically give priority to return guests. So the bottom line is, 
when you want to book, it's September. That's when you should be calling us at Trident Travel or calling the lodge of your choice and getting ready to book that trip because that's when they're going to know about availability. If you wait to figure out your schedule come the spring, you're probably going to have to compromise on w at least one, if not multiple factors that we talked about in this video. I'm Ben, and I hope this video helps you have an amazing trip to Alaska. And of course, we at Trident Travel are here to help make that happen. So if you have questions, let us know. We're here to help. And if you'd like to book your trip, and if you're ready to book that trip, give us a call at 888-413-5211 or email us 24-7 at support at tridentflyfishing.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.